So you you said that billions have been made off of your Snapchat yes. presence. Explain. Yes. And you still have the same account? No, I don't. No, I don't. What year bro. did you lose it? I lost it. 19, 2019, bro. Okay. That was hard. And but basically what happened was we started doing <laughs> promo. Started doing promo on my Snapchat. I had homies come around. They're like, yo, post me on your Snap. Post me on your Snap. I was like, okay, you're a character. You're funny, bro. You know, you're you're kind of reckless too. So it's like, you know, it doesn't make me the, the crazy guy on Snap. So I, I'm like, yo, boom, post you, post you, posting everybody on my Snap. And I'm posting all these people. And about the time you know it, these people are getting rich in less than a week or two. Middle manning deals, sending packs, uh, opening distros up, doing TP, doing all types of and basically, I started this whole trap promo industry that rappers are thriving off of right now. Everything you see on Instagram and a rap site, a rapper's like, oh, mm. shop with this distro. They got packs, lows, highs. Anytime you see a rapper doing that, I'm pretty much the seed to all that. You know, Nobody was doing trap promos. I was the first one to start that lane. Mm. I probably made about anywhere from 20 to 50 million doing trap promos on Snapchat. I don't even want to know. I didn't say a number, okay? 50 million? Yeah, yeah, Jesus bro. Christ. There was a period of time people were giving me $20,000 yeah. and I was turning down $10,000 offers just to post. I mean, like, it was like one second, like, post, throw the phone. Like, I was turning down 10 bands here and there, bro. But like, how do you know that you're not promoting someone who's a total scammer? Uh, that happens. That happens. You know, mm -hmm. it's basically the end customer to decipher if they want to do business with a random person they meet on the internet. I cannot validate another man. I cannot micromanage another man. I don't know what they've been up to, who they are, where they come from. If they pay me that bread, I'm going to post them on my I don't give a f if it's LGBT or whatever it is, or if it's this, <laughs> or it's Ukraine. I I'm going to post this shit. Okay, bro. weed. No, I'm just saying I'm gonna post whatever it is. But they should. Care. They should. They do. Like, well, wait, we hold West Hollywood. But they have a gay themed. We they got all that. They got everything. The they community. got everything. Mm, <laughs> that's smart. Um, but okay, so when I see Quando Rondo standing in his front yard, well, that's before he caught this federal drug case, I guess. But like when I see one of these rappers, I see YTB fat on my feet doing it a lot, and they're basically just saying like, "Yo, y'all need to shop with so and so." Hey, free Quando too. Yeah, free, free him. I'm a huge fan of him. But uh, you know. How much are these dudes getting paid, do you think, on average? And and, and what is it going to? Are no, these just, like, small operations? Yeah, I'm not putting anybody's business out. <laughs> okay. But my man's just told me he paid little baby 250K for a trap promo on IG. For him to post that's it. What, that's what I heard, bro. You know what I mean? And I know motherfuckers eat it, bro. Motherfuckers killing it. Meek's killing it. All the hella, hella influencers are killing it. And I created that whole lane, bro. Mm -hmm. Straight up. Like, I am the reason for all that, bro. Even getting people over to Telegram. I don't want to say I was the first person on Telegram, mm -hmm. but I got 99% of people to post their menus and construct their conglomerate of followers on Telegram. I was the reason for that, too. So I'm not on Telegram. It's uh, Well, I have been on it a little bit. Telegram's just filthy, to, bro. Just to do, like, one-on-one -on -one chats with people, though. Like, how, what's the business on there? You start, like, a group or something? So basically— You get followers? So basically, everything started on Snapchat. It was called Snaptrap. That's what we called it. So I created Snaptrap. And basically, everybody would post their menu, what product they have, their shipping techniques, or their repar of how to shop, or— how to visit them or how to send money. People would post all the info on Snapchat and basically Snap got deleted. And after Snap got deleted, everybody had to go over to Telegram. So everybody's Snap starting getting deleted, like everybody's pages, because they just started turning up the monitoration on it. After Kylie went on uh, Snap or Twitter, she's like, this shit sucks. When they remember, <laughs> do you remember when they did the update on Snapchat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the first update. Then they were going for their IPO or their offering or whatever the fuck it was, their stock shit. And basically, everyone's like, fuck this shit now. It's, it's monitored. You post some weed on it, you're getting deleted. And people are losing all their memories from when they were 2012, 13, 14, 15, mm -hmm. 16, 17, 18. And it hurt them from just posting a little bit of weed. And you can't send them an email. They don't have a 1-800 number. I actually went up to their headquarters in Santa Monica. My girl got her Instagram deleted, so I can't go back and look at our earliest conversation. Damn, bro. It's kind of a shame. Love right? to frame that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It probably wouldn't be too pretty anyway. Yeah, yeah. Shut up, so, bitch. <laughs> Stop Get over it. here. <laughs> um, but, uh, okay, so you went to, oh, to the I Facebook went to, headquarters? I went, no, I went to the Snapchat headquarters okay. in Santa Monica, and I was about to act a nut. Like, it felt like my heart was taking out my chest. I'm like, <gasps> just drive me there right now. Just drive me there. I'm like, pull up. I go inside. I, like, finesse past one person. Like, what are you here for? I'm like, no, I'm coming upstairs. I will go upstairs. And they got this big-ass Uso Samoan security guard with a big-ass blammer on him. I'm like, Fuck, like, what am I supposed to do right now? Make a mess, break shit, start crying, get on my knees. They have that security guard because people like you show up probably yeah, pretty yeah. consistently. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> people like, I can imagine female influencers fucking losing their mind over their social media pages. That's yeah. their whole life. Oh, so, God. Yeah. you know, it was tough for me. And I, I seen that dude. I was like, man, if I do some stupid shit, I'm definitely gonna get arrested and get my fucking, uh, get my ass whooped. 
And so I'm not going to do it. Then I was thinking about maybe I should bring like 20 party buses of my homies and people got their pages deleted and protested their park lot and all do a fucking like handcuff thing of they shit just so we get some attention. I was like, nah, if I do that, I'm probably going to get it. It's going to get back to me worse. I'm like, I got to settle with this. Boom, create another Snapchat, got my shit popping, got deleted again, deleted again, deleted again, deleted again. I probably got deleted about 35 times. Mm. So I just got off it. So the whole weed community kind of just connects on Telegram? Yeah, you can say Telegram is definitely the number one outlet for showcasing your menu. It's whatever community. You go to Barcelona, Germany, they got their whole menus on there. K, Molly, whatever the fuck you want. And I'm not saying anything that's already been said. It's all public information, bro. Like, mm. is, you, you go overseas, they'll be like, yo, follow my Telegram right now. Or you even have, they'll be like, scan things on, on corners and shit. Just scan it. You know what I mean? And Telegram is like encrypted so the cops can't get to it? Or I don't what? know, bro. I don't know anything about Telegram. On as far as the encryption side goes, but as far as posting my cannabis menu and my products without being deleted, which I've already been deleted on Telegram too, mm -hmm. just so you know that. But that's what I use Telegram for, just to post my products on my flower because I cannot post on Instagram. Well, I don't want to post on Instagram, so I use Telegram to post my flower pictures. That's all. How direct can you be on Instagram though? Because obviously you're trying to guide people to different things, but it's, it's difficult, right? Yeah, you know, you got to code words and be smart and strategic the way you converse to your following of your people. Okay. So compare and contrast yourself to another famous weed entrepreneur, but a dude like Burner, who obviously through cookies has created like one of the biggest weed brands and everything. But I feel like he's done it on like a very corporate level. And with you, I feel like you kind of have a different angle on shit where you're a little bit more in the streets. I don't know what the fuck Burner's doing, but it seems like, you know, it, it, I'm just using him as an example. Like, it feels like you've kind of always tried to stay a little bit closer to to the, the underground yeah. side of things, right? Yeah, bro. We're true to the streets. Uh, shout out Burner. Definitely a legend. Created an amazing legacy. Master delegator, too. Uh, he took he chose the corporate route, you know. I'm still serving people. I'm still in South Central, downtown every day. I'm still in Chirac, South Side, West Side, Englewood, serving people every day, outside every day. Mm. But Burner's definitely been an inspiration, and uh, I, I love it when people compare us, you know. It's like dope, it's dope. However, you know, it's a little tough for him because he's got a lot of stuff going on. So for him to really do due diligence on what's going in his bags and procure the product going in his bags. And it just kind of got fucked for him. Like when he jumped the whole rec market, he wanted to scale up so fast. And then the weed in the bag started like people wasn't fucking with it. So the first London pound cake that came out, the Gary Payton that came out, remember the Gary Payton mm -hmm. that dropped yeah. the cereal milk. That shit was amazing, bro. It was some of the best weed, man. They hit it out the park, but it was just hard to keep up consistently with the volume and the demand his brand had. And it kind of backfired on him. And Burner, I'm here to help you. You want, I'll quality control. I'll, I'll intern for you, bro. I'll go intern for you for a whole year. Go to the grow every day. I'll help out with the whole packaging and all that, bro. I'm a good person like that, bro. Because, okay, yeah, somebody like me, I always kind of wonder how much of the equation is the weed just actually being incredible versus the packaging and the marketing because brands nowadays just put such an insane amount of effort into the marketing side of things. Yeah, like all the corporate brands that like scaled up so fast, it just, it went, it went bad for them. So I'm so real happy. I'm really happy that I'm still true to the streets. And it's like, I'm, st I've bro, I've turned down a hundred million dollar offers. No cap. Like go all the way legal, have my brand over. I'm just going to be the face. I'm like, yo, I don't want to do it. Like, I don't want to do it. You know, why? because I've been able to be successful independent where I can strategically do what I want to upon federal legalization when it goes federal then I'll figure out what I want to do and what States I want to operate in and how I can micromanage certain procurement within the brand you okay. know a lot of the brands went down like jungle boys their shit sucks now you know no disrespect to them their shit was fire at chalice 2017 it's just that mass commercial like trying to grow shit it doesn't it doesn't go right for any of these brands bro connected to like they were connected was fire when the black bags came people love connected and then they just went super wreck and the shit ended up sucking man I'm, I'm not saying anything bad bro like any other stoner you can bring on here, you can bring a thousand stoners. They're going to say the same thing as me, bro. Like, so I'm just speaking the truth and I love these brands and I look up to all these brands. So don't think anything disrespectful, you know? 